Okay, so when someone hears about M Sat Enterprise Limited, here we are requesting that you place orders of eggs and clean eggs. Place order of broilers which are standard and have acquired the standard weight. Place order of organic fertilizer that we process from our poultry here. Place order regarding Kenyaji feeds. And also in addition to that, don't go back. Place order of dairy meal and we'll be able to deliver at your point of destination. So we brag ourselves for standard, quality, and in addition to that, uh, we achieve the quality control standards for these products. Welcome to MSAT Enterprise Limited, a farm of organic farming. Here I've got six structures of birds, each holding a maximum of 1,152 birds. And we produce 4,500 eggs per day. In addition, also we do broilers in batches of 200 daily. Please request for orders and we'll be able to deliver these eggs and meat from our birds or from our farm, which is organic to you with immediate effect. We do also produce 1.2 tons of organic fertilizer from our birds, which is supportive for your crops. So also order and place an order. We do package in 20 kg bags at 800. Biogas system. Uh, this biogas system, we use it uh, for brooding and also staff may use it for cooking. And uh, we do use uh, waste from uh, the poultry. Uh, other than having these vegetables, uh, this is the side that uh, we keep our birds. This side, eh, uh, we have got uh, three activities that takes place. Eh? We have the brooding house, where we raise our day old chick to the stage of laying. Then uh, we have got now the layers, uh, which we transfer from the brooder. Then uh, other than that, we have got the other side also, we do raise our broilers for meat. So this is our brooder. Uh, here we do receive uh, chicks, which are day old. And uh, before we receive these chicks, eh, we ensure that uh, this brooder has prepared two weeks earlier uh, before their delivery. Uh, we do disinfect this house. Uh, we do also ensure that uh, we bring in sawdust which is dry. And we ensure that uh, as you see these uh, coils which are connected on the floor, uh, they are able to allow water which is warm to flow so that it can be able to keep the temperatures warm for this uh, structure. Uh, so here we keep these uh, chicks uh, from day old until they are able to acquire or attain a 16 to 18 weeks. Uh, that's the stage that can be able to say that we do transfer them to cages uh, when they are about ready to start uh, laying. Uh, here basically uh, we follow vaccination program strictly and uh, also we do ensure that uh, we keep the hygiene standards uh, by ensuring that uh, that is a uh, where this can be able to keep these uh, birds from uh, stress-free. Uh, as you can see, we have got the drinkers which are hanged and we have got the feeders also. I will ensure that we supplement them with these feeders, I will supply them with these feeders and traps uh, which are adequate to avoid congestion and give them at least uh, adequate space for them to be able to feed and be able to take water. Uh, here, in addition to that, eh, as I've said, eh, uh, when receiving these chicks to ensure that the feeds are available, uh, those are the starter cramps which we give them at least two weeks before we can be able to change uh, to chick mash. Uh, the first uh, feeding is just to ensure that we provide enough energy for them and also to stabilize in terms of growth. 
Uh, then uh, we can be able to change now to chick mash. We do supply them for about eight weeks. And then uh, we shift now to growers mash. That is uh, between week eight and at least week uh, 16 to 17. Uh, when you are able to notice uh, the first laying of the buds. Uh, we can also be able to see this structure, you see, it is highly ventilated. Uh, that's just to allow uh, free circulation of air and ensure that uh, this bus do not uh, have that uh, awful smell. So, uh, as you can see, there are coils on the floor. Uh, we don't have here brooder jikos. Uh, what we do is to warm this structure. We normally use our biogas, uh, which is converted uh, from the waste that we collect from the poultry. Uh, that biogas system is able to supply enough gas which can be able to heat water. Uh, that water flows through these pipes and uh, it keeps the warm, or it keeps the room warm and so allows those chicks when they are resting or uh, just lying on the floor, they can be able to feel that warm due to uh, the flow of uh, water which is warm. So that's uh, how we normally do our brooding here. And uh, as you can also be able to see these structures up here, uh, when we receive chicks, eh, we do allow those chicks to be able to, to grow up to a certain age. These small houses here, you see, uh, they are just there to maintain temperature when chicks are still uh, very young. So what we do, we lower them uh, within the first and the second week, or even up to the third week. Once the chicks have grown and have acquired enough feathers uh, at a stage that they can be able to maintain uh, their temperatures and be able to support themselves very well, then we can be able to raise them, uh, raise them high. So that uh, now we give enough space, free circulation of air, and also to allow if there's uh, some smell which is not conducive for them to flow outside. See in this brooder house we are having a number of chicks. This is about 2,100 chicks. Uh, this is uh, what currently we are able to order from the Ken chick, uh, and that's the capacity, which means that uh, there are a number of birds that we are going to release as X layers. So these ones are supposed to replace those ones which are uh, in the cages. So what we normally do here, uh, I want to inform you that uh, here we rear these birds for a period of uh, two years when they are in laying stage. Uh, within that period, eh, you'll notice that their curve of laying starts to drop. And so we should be able to prepare to find out how you're going to replace the stock and also to avoid eh, getting out of the market. So what we do, we receive chicks and we plan so that at this time we are about to release the other birds from the cages, eh? we are able to receive another stock so that we can be able to replace them and be able to maintain eh, our market eh, uh, sales. So the total number of birds uh, currently in this farm, other than these chicks, is about 5,000 birds. And so we are expecting that uh, in about uh, one and a half months we'll be releasing a number of birds from the cages and this is the stock that is going to replace them. Then we'll be able to prepare because we have made another order that in about like a one month's time, we should be able to replace another stock so that we can be able to continue with the process of brooding. Here brooding is continuous. Brooding is continuous and so that we can be able to ensure that also we have eggs in a continuous process. We have got three challenges. Eh? And uh, of course the obvious challenge diseases, we cannot be able to rule it out because as we receive these uh, birds, uh, if you are not able to maintain the standards that are required or you keep this house uh, in, under the required conditions, eh, then expect that uh, you are going to face these diseases. Of course, uh, birds are uh, very delicate when they are uh, in bad situations uh, that I may encounter or may result into uh, some, something that delays their hygiene. So, diseases is key. And uh, here we do control these diseases uh, despite that uh, they are there. Coxidiosis, we do control them. Uh, this is related to vaccination, like Newcastle, uh, fall typhoid and fall pox. Uh, those are some of the diseases that uh, any farmer who is in this enterprise might face. And so those are key, but as here, uh, we have not encountered that bit uh, in our situation, eh? but we have minor cases. Of course, in a day or two days, we may not fail to lose a bird, but those are minor cases, but we are trying to to handle them. Uh, another case that we do face, or a challenge that we are currently facing also, feeding is, uh, and feeds. Uh, currently, the prices of our feeds have hiked, and uh, I like to put this one that uh, uh, with the prevailing conditions, 
uh, with the high prices, uh, feeding of poultry, and any person who is willing to come to this uh, enterprise, then he should be able to, to be ready to encounter this kind of challenge. Uh, feeds have gone high, and even uh, a number of farmers you may see they are contemplating to start processing their own feeds so that they can be able to cut down the cost of uh, managing the poultry farms. Uh, the third challenge that we are facing, eh, and uh, this one is market. Uh, given that we are in uh, agricultural activities and farming uh, of birds, eh, with the eggs, uh, recently we've been facing uh, challenges of marketing eggs. And we find that uh, given that uh, more eggs have been coming in from our neighboring countries eh, uh, at a very low prices, and uh, compared to the cost of production that we are facing in our country here, then you will find that uh, most of farmers have been facing this one uh, as a uh, big challenge. So we find that uh, farmers have been forced to sell their products at a very low price eh, compared to uh, the cost of production that uh, they are incurring in their farm. So we find that at that particular uh, place, at uh, that particular case, uh, we find that farmers cannot be able to do what? Farmers cannot be able to meet the uh, the cost of the farm, so making them at least some of them to give out such like project, uh, projects. So marketing has been a challenge. Uh, this is one of the houses that we keep our layers, and as you can see, uh, we have got a, a number of layers in this structure. Uh, we have got about uh, 768 layers, and so. Uh, we do receive eggs uh, daily from these uh, houses and uh, this house or this layer they are supposed to lay to about two years uh, in their laying period. Uh, within that particular period we are able to assess their feeding, we assess their health to maintain the production curve. Uh, in about 18 months uh, the curve may start to drop and when they start to drop we find that here now we end up with what we refer to as six layers. Uh, these eggs layers we do sell them and uh, for those interested uh, like this bus as you can be able to see they are getting old eh? uh, very soon we'll be selling them at 400 shillings uh, per bird uh, from this farm we have got this and you can be able to book on time and be able to sell you the number you want welcome to the fertilizer section uh, this is where we do our organic fertilizer processing uh, this side as you can see there are a number of tanks and uh, there are three in number. Uh, we do mix our waste from the poultry and then uh, we allow it to settle here as a holding tank uh, from this first tank. Uh, once it's full, uh, now we release in the next two tanks that you can be able to see in front of me. So these two tanks, as you see here, they are just here for fermentation process to allow this fertilizer to acquire certain a standard condition that are required and which can be able to allow farmer to get what they want. So we have got fermentation tank one and then fermentation tank two. So once it has been here for about 12 to 14 days, uh, this fertilizer is ready for processing uh, activities or uh, for the processing uh, that's required. It is released in this truck that you see as a greenhouse here, there's another tank. So in this tank, uh, we have got a, a feeding pump. And in this feeding pump, also we have got the pipes which connect to the main processing machine. So here we are. Uh, there's a number of uh, steps that uh, takes place or we go through as a, a process of uh, coming up with this product. And uh, as you can see, uh, we have got our watering machine. This watering machine receives the liquid part uh, from the tank outside the greenhouse. And so here, it is separating the solid from the liquid. And so that solid is the one that is carried through the conveyor to the dryers. Uh, the liquid part goes back to where you have got what we thought was a foliar tank in that greenhouse. So from here, uh, this fertilizer is taken to the dryers. Uh, to allow drying process to take place. So this is the conveyor which takes this uh, solid part or this solid fertilizer to the dryer uh, basins, if I can put them as basins.
from the conveyor, as I've said, eh, uh, this is uh, a fertilizer. It's now brought to the dryer. And as I've said, within this dryer, we normally use two sources of heat. We use solar. And uh, in addition to that, if there's no enough solar, we use power. That power normally comes in or blows in hot warm air or hot air, which allows this uh, fertilizer to be able to acquire the standard moisture. Uh, that is a, a good in terms of packaging. So from there, uh, we take this uh, dry fertilizer. There are those farmers who normally require fertilizer which is uh, uh, maybe in a crushed form. And there are those ones which normally, who normally require this fertilizer when maybe it is uh, uh, from the dryer, direct for their farms. So from the dryer, once it has a dried uh, up to a certain percentage of moisture that is required it is taken to the conveyor so that it can be able to get crushed we do crush so that we acquire a homogeneous form then from a uh, crushing is where now we do our packaging so this is our conveyor screw uh, where we do crushing of the organic fertilizer once it is dry from the from the dryer basins. So here we pour it inside this holder, uh, then we allow it to flow up to the crusher. Uh, its purpose just to ensure that we acquire a homogeneous kind of product uh, from uh, the dryers. So here is where we crush our fertilizer before we pack it. So we allow it to dry and uh, to allow so recirculation of air before packaging uh, and uh, maybe uh, do a branding of our products. So this is our product and uh, it's ready for packaging. So farmers, uh, we encourage you to use organic fertilizer. We do packages of 20 kgs, but still you can get in smaller quantities. We do it at 800 shillings per bag of 20 kgs. You are welcome to a farming of organic. Organic fertilizer here, uh, we do it for planting of uh, crops, short-term crops, maize, uh, vegetables, and currently even farmers who are around with uh, tea plantations, they are using it, and uh, coffee. So the output is good, and it is a uh, 90% uh, satisfactory.